Welcome to our special coverage of the North Salmon trial here on ClickOrlando.com. I'm Justin Mormuth. Salmon, the widow of Pulse nightclub gunman Omar Mateen, has been found not guilty. The jury finding Salmon not guilty on both counts. The first, aiding and abetting the provision of material support to a foreign terrorist organization. The second charge is obstruction of justice. A lot of emotions running high following that not guilty verdict. Let's get out to News 6's Nadine Giannis. She was in the courtroom when the verdict came down. And Nadine, how would you describe Salman's reaction to hearing these not guilty, please? Uh, it was immediate tears, Justin, and she wasn't the only one. Those emotions inside that courtroom today, palpable before the judge even came in to announce that the verdict has been reached. We got that statement that a verdict was reached at 942 in the morning. By 1010, everyone was seated, just waiting for the judge. And that is when we saw Noor Salman sitting at the defense table, her hands physically shaking her defense attorney Fritz Scheller putting his hand on top of her holding her back reassuring her it's gonna be okay it seemed like she had a book in front of her some type of scriptural reading I, I can't tell you what exactly that was she was reading that until her family walked in her family came in she turned around looked at them and they bowed their heads reassuring her whatever happens here is gonna be okay. But when she wasn't seeing her family, we could see them two rows behind her, also visibly nervous, holding on to each other. Her aunt at one point had the prayer hands on her head as we waited and the judge came out and said, the jury has a verdict. And it was quick, standard procedural, exactly how you would imagine it. The jury came in, not one looked at North Salmon. They sat down, the judge asked, have you reached a verdict? The foreman passes over the verdict form and that's when Grace, his court reporter, read out loud those charges on obstruction of justice, not guilty, on aiding and abetting, not guilty. Visible gas from inside the courtroom from her defense team Take a look at this sketch. This sketch is the moment that North Salman heard not guilty and she turned and looked at her family. The difference from this sketch, though, is that her face was red, bawling, tears falling down. Her family elated with joy, also gasping, holding each other uh, elated with joy. That's on the left side of the courtroom, on the defense side. On the right side, Pulse families, stoic, in shock. They didn't have a single word, a single reaction, stone-faced as that jury was read. It wasn't until outside of the courtroom that we began to see emotions from several of the Pulse families, including Pulse owner Barbara Poma with tears in her eyes. As I was walking out, Charles Swift, North Salmon's defense attorney, uh, went up to her aunt, uh, her cousin, Susan Adia. This is the woman who North Salmon stayed with in Mississippi right after the shooting. Susan told Charles, thank you, thank you. And he says, I told you we just don't lose, is what he told her. And walking out, I asked him, how are you feeling? And he told me justice has been done here. As he's telling me that, the Pulse families are walking out, and that's when I began to see their tears start coming down congregating together, holding each other. And as many reporters were rushing out, I kind of took my time for a second to kind of see how everyone was feeling. And this was the moment I saw Fritz Scheller, the local counsel on the defense team who, who practices out of Orlando here. He went up to one Pulse mom, uh, Rosa. Her, her daughter was shot and survived the shooting. She's been here every single day of the trial. She texted me yesterday saying, this is awful. It's awful waiting. She wanted closure. She wanted justice. She wanted a conviction. And this was the moment I saw Salman's defense attorney hold her hand and embrace her. And I'm not sure what exchange it was, but it seemed like he was acknowledging this Pulse uh, survivor's mom, uh, giving her some reassurance. And I know the defense attorney after that had mentioned that if Noor Salman would, would have been found guilty, she would have been the latest victim in this case. And with, that's why they believe the jury came back with a not guilty verdict. So many emotions. Barbara Poma walked out of here. She didn't say a single word to us as she walked out. Uh, tears in her eyes. She had her sunglasses on. Uh, also, we do know that several Pulse families are going to be gathering at the Pulse site very soon here. Uh, but of course, elation from North Salman's family. Uh, they came out on the footsteps of the courthouse not too long ago and said this to reporters. Take a listen. I said that day one that she is innocent. And I will stand here in front of you when the jury come up with a verdict to tell you, I told you so. And now I came here to tell you, I told you so, she's innocent. When I believe in she's innocent, she is innocent. We stood by her and that's where she is. 
few days ago that Al Salman, who testified on behalf of his niece, Noor Salman, at trial, saying that she is a good mother and all she wants is to see her son. He told us that he talked to her little boy just a few days ago and he had said, I just want to have mommy home in time for Easter to color Easter eggs. And it's very possible that that could happen as she's expected to be released this afternoon. I want to bring in my colleague, Mike DeForest, who's been by my side every single day covering this trial with me. And I know our federal expert, Jason Johnson, is here with us as well to kind of weigh in on everything, every step of the trial. First, Jason, your reaction to the verdict today? Well, I, I think it's, an, it's clearly an important verdict for this community. Um, it clearly indicates to me that the, um, the jury disregarded in its entirety the written statement that the FBI presented and that the government introduced as evidence. Uh, they simply did not believe that those were her words. They had to have completely um, ignored that or they, or they would have had to have convicted her on obstruction of justice because at the end of each of those three statements, she handwrites some, some notes and in one of those she says, I'm sorry I lied to you, meaning the FBI. So that was obstruction of justice right there. So they clearly discounted the entirety of that written statement in finding her not guilty of both counts. Uh, as we were talking about earlier, uh, the defense counsel, after they came out after, uh, uh, in essence, winning their case, uh, they said that the FBI really needs to start changing the way it conducts these interviews with potential suspects, pointing out that even if uh, if Noor Salman had been questioned here in Orlando, Orlando police would have audio or video recorded their interrogation of her, but in this case, the FBI did not. Do you think that this may change the way the FBI does business after this trial, or uh, do you feel that this has still been such a proven technique in being able to get confessions out of guilty people that uh, this won't deter them from using that that style of interrogation? Well, they're going to do a, a post-case analysis of kind of what happened in the case, uh, certainly at the local level, and I think probably even at the national level when you're talking about a, a terrorism case that did not result in a guilty um, verdict. They're going to do an analysis and try to figure out what went wrong. Um, whether they decide that the failure to uh, video or audio record the confession uh, is something that resulted in the acquittal, um, you know, who knows how they're going to decide that. But I don't know that I would expect to see any uh, significant change in the way they conduct their interrogations. Now, they, when they're, they're successful most of the time. And it was during uh, opening statements that the, the prosecution told the jury flat out, there is not one single piece of evidence, one single piece, that will convince you beyond a reasonable doubt of Noor Salman's guilt. Instead, uh, the prosecution was optimistic that it was the accumulation of all of the evidence, everything from the surveillance videos showing Noor Salman on a shopping spree with her husband, which the prosecution suggested was basically her way of cashing in before uh, he were to either be put in prison or uh, get killed by police as ultimately happened after this terrorist attack. And then there were just these small uh, isolated text messages, the one uh, that the government really seizing on uh, that was reportedly Noor Salman's, uh, according to the prosecution, feeding her husband a cover story saying, hey, if your mom calls, uh, tell her you're out with your friend. Um, was this a matter of the prosecution by no fault of their own? Uh, these were the cards that they were dealt, and yet they had in a written statement, Nor Salman saying, I knew about this attack and I participated in the planning of it. Well, there were two things that we didn't hear from the government until their closing statement. The first of which is this concept that the, the Pulse nightclub was not ever his intended first target, that his intended first target was always Disney Springs. The other part that I think is very interesting that the government didn't raise until its closing is that her references to Pulse were not actually to the Pulse nightclub, but were to a nightclub that she thought was out at Disney named Pulse, which would have played into their argument that, look, they went out to Disney Springs that was always his intended target, and she went out there with him to case that. By not making those arguments in the opening statement, it was, I think, probably the biggest flaw in the government's case. I think they should not have waited till their closing statement to make those arguments to the jury. They should have said at the beginning, hey, you're going to see in this written statement that she makes references to Pulse, but she was just mistaken about what Pulse meant. She thought that was a nightclub out at Disney Springs. The important part is that she says we went out to Disney Springs. That's where Omar Mateen went the night of this attack. It was his original intent to attack Disney Springs. 
She went out there with him, and it's her aiding and abetting of taking steps to help him prepare for that. That is is what we're charging her with and what you should find her guilty of. It matters not where he eventually attacked. What matters is that he committed this attack and she assisted in that. Ultimately, I think the jury bought into the argument that she's just an innocent spouse. I think their questions to Judge Byron yesterday of uh, define willfulness for us, give, ex give us some examples of what that kind of willful assistance would have been, indicated to me that the jury was buying into the innocent spouse and they were thinking that maybe she was just on these shopping trips because they were a family out doing some shopping, that it wasn't her intending to give him some aid and assistance in carrying out this attack. And that's ultimately, I think, the way they came down on this. Now that we have a verdict, I think the question we all will have is, what was this jury thinking? What were they discussing? And, and the judge made it very clear to them, uh, even from jury selection process, that they are under no obligation to share their story with anybody. The attorneys can't approach them and say, how did you come up with this verdict? Um, the judge has done a, a uh, I want to say, a very good job of, of hiding these jurors' identities that I think it's going to be uh, very difficult for some unscrupulous media organization to perhaps uh, try to identify and track down these jurors. Whether their friends will say, hey, my buddy was uh, a juror, he's been gone for uh, a couple weeks, remains to be seen. And it remains to be seen whether these jurors will voluntarily want to share their stories. But uh, what I, I got to admit I'm most curious of is uh, obviously their, the, their verdict was not guilty um, because they believed that they uh, was not proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Was it that they felt that right. perhaps she knew, but the government just didn't get the evidence where it needed to be? Or did they truly think that she was, as the defense describes, the 50th, potentially could have been the 50th victim of Pulse? Yeah, I think that's the interesting uh, point that we need to make, or the important point we need to make about our criminal justice system in the United States, is it's, it's not a verdict of guilty or innocent. It's a verdict of guilty or not guilty. It's the government's obligation to prove that the defendant committed the acts with which they've been charged, the crimes with which they've been charged, beyond a reasonable doubt. The jury can think, hey, I think she probably did it, and still find her not guilty. The question is, did the government prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt? Well, uh, we can hope that maybe these jurors will provide the insight, um, but I don't know that we ever will hear from them. Uh, again, just your, your thoughts. I mean, this was such a big event when this happened to this community a, a year and a half ago, not just uh, for the people who were there, their loved ones who lost people in the Pulse attack, but I, I think all of us, even just as Americans, felt violated by this attack and, 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 and people want answers. And I think this trial did provide uh, some of the detailed answers about what led up to this attack and some of the logistics in the days leading up to it. Um, but just very quickly, uh, how do you think the community will sit with this verdict? Well, I think it's going to bother a lot of people in the local community, obviously. There were a lot of people who felt like somebody needs to pay. Omar Mateen is dead, so we can't hold him accountable any more than we already have. Uh, and that, you know, she's the only one left and somebody needs to pay, so it's got to be her. But, you know, one of the family members made the point that regardless of how this all plays out, and I agreed with her pre-verdict that whether it's guilty or not guilty, hopefully at a minimum, the families of those people who were killed and injured at least got some closure from the standpoint of finding out what actually happened that night. There were a lot of facts that we as a community did not know about the attack until this trial started. I didn't know that he had been almost immediately engaged by the armed officer. I didn't know that he almost immediately retreated into the bathroom because his gun jammed. I didn't know that local law enforcement was inside the Pulse nightclub within about a half an hour of the shooting beginning. Those were facts that I didn't know. And I think at a minimum, we at least got a clear picture of how this attack unfolded that night. Jason Johnson, we really appreciate your legal insight to all of this. Uh, it's been an emotional day, I think, for a lot of people out here at the courthouse, and we're going to continue to have coverage uh, on News 6 and ClickOrlando.com. So we're going to send it back to you. Mike DeForest, Nadine Giannis, and Jason Johnson, excellent coverage with this trial. We appreciate it, and we will be staying on top of the latest developments as our coverage continues of the North Salmon verdict. You can find a complete breakdown of the verdict and our previous coverage of the trial right here on clickorlando.com slash North Salmon trial. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. I'm Justin Mormon.
thing. You did that. The 12th.
I'm here now.